In one of my last videos, I discussed Stephen Hawking and his sad passing at the age of 76. But in order to discuss any of his works, we need to first discuss one of the other titans of science, Sir Isaac Newton. In this video, we'll discuss who he was and what he did for the world as we know it today. Now, Sir Isaac Newton was born on the 25th of December, yes, Christmas Day, 1642, and he died on the 20th of March, 1726. He was a mathematician, astronomer, theologian, author, and physicist, and he's widely recognised as one of the most influential scientists of all time, and a key figure in the scientific revolution. This scientific revolution is used by historians to describe the emergence of modern science, when developments in mathematics, physics, astronomy, biology, including human anatomy and chemistry, transformed the views of society about nature. Now, Newton's early life was not an overall happy one. His father, also named Isaac Newton, had died three months before his birth. Isaac himself was born prematurely and was a small child. When just three, his mother remarried and Isaac went to live with his maternal grandmother. Now the young Isaac disliked his stepfather and he maintained some enmity towards his mother for marrying him throughout his life. From the age of about 12 until he was 17, Newton was educated at the King's School Grantham, where he learnt Latin and Greek. He was removed from school by his mother, who widowed for a second time, attempted to make a farmer of him. Newton hated farming, and it was only thanks to Henry Stokes, master at the King's School, who managed to persuade his mother to send him back to school so that he might complete his education. In June 1661, he was admitted to Trinity College, Cambridge, on the recommendation of his uncle, the Reverend William Asikoff, who'd studied there. And it was here that he started making all of his groundbreaking work in the fields of mathematics, optics, astronomy, and of course, physics. In 1665, he started work on what would ultimately become calculus, the mathematical study of continuous change. Now, among the disciplines that utilise calculus include physics, engineering, economics, statistics and medicine. It's used to create mathematical models in order to arrive at an optimal solution. In the field of chemistry, calculus can be used to predict functions such as reaction rates and radioactive decay. Meanwhile, in biology, it's utilised to formulate rates such as birth and death rates. In economics, calculus is used to compute marginal cost and marginal revenue, enabling economists to predict maximum profit with a specific setting. At the same time, in 1666, Newton also worked on the properties of light, and he showed that coloured light does not change its properties by separating out a coloured beam and shining it on various objects. And regardless of whether the light was reflected, scattered or transmitted, the light remained the same colour. Thus, he observed that colour is the result of objects interacting with an already coloured light rather than objects generating the colour themselves. In 1679, Newton returned to his work on celestial mechanics by considering gravitation and its effect on the orbits of planets. In this work, Newton stated the three universal laws of motion. Together, these laws describe the relationship between any object and the forces acting upon it and the resulting motion, laying the foundation for what we know of as classical mechanics. Newton's first law states that every object will remain at rest or in a uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of an external force. The second law explains how the velocity of an object changes when it's subjected to an external force. And the third law states that for every action or force in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In the 1690s, Newton wrote a number of religious tracts dealing with the literal and symbolic interpretation of the Bible. He also devoted a great deal of time to alchemy. Of an estimated 10 million words of writing in Newton's papers, about 1 million of them deal with alchemy. Now, Newton moved to London to take up the post of Warden of the Royal Mint around 1696, 
and he became perhaps the best known master of the mint upon the death of Thomas Neal in 1699. It was a position that Newton held for the last 30 years of his life. The appointment was intended as a sinecure, but Newton took it seriously, retiring from his Cambridge duties in 1701 and exercising his power to reform the currency. He was made the president of the Royal Society in 1703. And in April 1705, Queen Anne knighted Newton during a royal visit to Trinity College, Cambridge. Newton sadly died in his sleep in London on the 20th of March 1727, and his body was buried in Westminster Abbey. After his death, Newton's hair was examined and found to contain mercury, probably resulting from his alchemical pursuits. Mercury poisoning could also explain Newton's eccentricity in his later life. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to click subscribe below to ensure you don't miss any of the episodes. And please, as always, feel free to leave a comment, topic suggestion, or question below, or you can always shoot me an email at 5w's and 1h at gmail.com. And I'll say bye-bye for now.